perhaps the greatest symbol of Persia's resurrection and of what happened to the Mongols when they put down roots was this, the mausoleum of Oljetu, a Mongol king. It took thousands of craftsmen to build it and it's taking a team of international architects years just to restore it. Robert, you've described this place as almost a sort of early Taj Mahal. What is it that makes it so unique? Well, essentially, it's a building that's far ahead of its time. In fact, it sets the style for later Persian building, and this on all sorts of counts. First of all, it's a, an extraordinary feat of structural engineering. It's far ahead of its time as a building of this size. There was nothing of this size erected either before or even after this period. So, in a real sense, the, the whole of Iranian architecture stands in the shadow of this building. It's got an immense complexity, both internally and externally, both in structure and decoration. In fact, one of its great strengths is the way that structure and decoration are in perfect equilibrium. You don't feel that structure dominates at the expense of decoration or vice versa. Take a look internally, for example, the way that the whole building has an extraordinary airiness, lightness, and grace. The way that this vast space is repeatedly divided up by windows, by niches, columns, all kinds of architectural features. And yet, even though the, the walls are constantly broken up in this way, nevertheless, there's a tremendous sense of mass, of heaviness, of content in the building. Well, at that point, Robert, let's... Uh take a look higher up if we may tell me the place is absolutely full of scaffolding at the moment did they have uh, scaffolding in those days oh yes they would have had scaffolding not metal scaffolding of course wood scaffolding all the way up to the top of the building when decoration was being applied and they don't even plug the scaffolding holes so even to this day you find holes left where scaffolding used to be what would have been the biggest problem in 1310, I mean, in terms of building something as massive as this, in terms of getting the structure right so that it didn't fall down. I mean, what was the most important thing? The, the eight pillars or what? What was the key to it? The key to it was the dome, which we rightly regard as the, as the crown of the whole building. In fact, the resemblance to a crown would have been even stronger when the eight minarets around it would have been in place. Now they're half shattered, of course. But the big problem was for that dome to stand up, and it stands up by virtue of its perfect profile. The way that it's quite devoid of buttressing, pinnacles, any kind of external support. Its thrusts are all concentrated into the base itself. Built around 1310, the mausoleum is about 160 feet high. The dome compares with the Pantheon in Rome of 130 AD, St. Paul's Cathedral in London, completed in 1709, and the Capitol in Washington, 1864, which needed iron girders to hold it up. The mausoleum once towered over the Ilkhon capital, Sultanie, but the city has long since gone and only a small village survived. Sultanie was a city built by royal decree designed to surpass Tabriz. It never did. It was in the wrong place for trade and offered no extra advantage. Sultanier took six years to build, but the complex restoration work will take more than twice as long. But there are other problems concerning mainly the decoration of the building where it wouldn't be so easy to reproduce the old techniques. Take the galleries up there, for example, 24 of them all with vault patterns and carved and painted plaster that have really no equal anywhere else in Persia or for that matter in the world. With a gallery like that alone, this building makes its claim to rank among the great buildings of the world. And 
what else would you rank with the galleries? Well, principally the stress on sacred names throughout the interior. The way that the name of God, Allah, leaps to your eye wherever you go throughout the mausoleum. Perhaps on a tiny scale, say the, the joint between two bricks which is carved with the name of God, or perhaps on, in letters two feet high, high up on the dome or on the, on the walls. Or even in places actually where no one was ever going to see them. An important point, yes. Yes, so clearly throughout the craftsmen would be preparing all this work for, for God alone, knowing that they would never, ever be uh, appreciated. And, the, and then there are the other sorts of tiles and the terracotta and... Yes, always this sensitivity to the use of color, which was later to be a, a hallmark of Persian architecture, you find expressed here the way that one or two colors are made to do the work of a dozen. The restorers working on the mausoleum wanted to retrieve the exact colors of the 14th century. Now is a production we are doing. Yes. And you see, we want to reach the same tonality as the ancient one. You can, uh, you can distinguish. This is, in fact, a modern-day tile which Enrico De Rico and his team have produced to be like these old tiles. Now, this is the one that's how old? It's 700 years old. 700 years old. It's a piece we removed from the door. As you can see, when you look back at this side, you see this is the smoothness of the new tile, and there is the 700-year-old tile. But on the front, they look alike. The first color used in Persian tiles was blue. But the restorers at Sultanier could find no modern blue to match the ancient tiles of the dome. They had to experiment themselves. The mixture they devised is kept under lock and key in this workshop. Now, when, when you started this work, did you find it difficult to explain exactly what the color was you wanted and so on? Yeah, it was, for the first, I didn't speak the language. For the second, they haven't done before. So joking, I thought I won't like my eyes. Color of your color eyes. Color of my eyes. Yes, sort of bloodshot Blood. color. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> Only the ancient, original methods will satisfy the restorers as the secret blend is ground into the liquid glaze for the tiles. The mausoleum was built by as many as 14,000 craftsmen brought from all over Persia and beyond. Today, the men rebuilding it have left jobs in the fields. To find lost skills has brought difficulties. What was the difficulty? The difficulty was to find the exact proportion between the materials. Because just giving less or more could change completely. As you can see, this is just only different proportion of uh, mixture. And, and you can have, and you can, in spite of that, it's, it's maybe one uh, impurity. impurity of a, uh, oxi oxide of copper. And you want d slightly different colors yes, in, in the dome? I, I want this to give the uh, shape of the dome. Because I start with a more dark color and I finish with a more light. Now, what made you dedicate yourself to this mausoleum? What was it about the mausoleum that made you decide to do it? Well, uh, I... You can prove the same when you remain alone here. It's, it's an enchanting view. It's a magic thing. It's a landscape it's a, and loneliness. And something you cannot refuse. When I came, I was going to, to leave immediately, 24 hours. 
Then after I decided to stay a month, and after it, I spent more than five years. Are you in love with that building? I think so. I think so. It may be too much. This is a problem.